Hi, this is Ben Baxter with Accent Software. Today we're going to do a quick demo session on the product configurator. I'm going to start this from a sales document, so we're going to go straight from a sales quote to creating the configured item based on customer feedback, and then converting that sales quote to an order, and then eventually creating a production order from it. So uh, again, starting from the customer request on a sales document, configuring the product for their needs, and then converting that to a, a firm demand, a sales order, so the client's agreeing to buy the product, which again triggers demand creating a production order to make that product. So we're gonna start from a sales quote, and we'll just go ahead and create a new one, and we'll create it to customer 30,000, which really not a big deal which one we use. Uh, we'll go ahead and pick a date that's sometime out in the future so that for our MRP it'll pick it up. And we'll come down to our line and what we're actually going to do is just open up the configurator right from the lines. And so I'm going to come in and select a truck body which has uh, different various requirements for it. So we'll go ahead and pick our standard post body. Uh, we'll come in and say that this one's going to have some cross members related to it. The cross members are going to have 11 inch spacing. Uh, the truck body itself is 10 feet, not 100, uh, which drops in related information for me, does various calculations. Now, I have a, a setting in the system that says if the truck body uh, goes beyond 10 feet, then a different item is required. So if I make this 10 and a half feet, uh, all of a sudden it switches to a different item. So that's just showing some of the example. Uh, same thing with the gusset. Uh, if I increase the, the feet to 12 and a half feet, uh, now I need more gussets. So different requirements based on different calculations um, and, and letting you see some of the capability there. I also have a sub configuration for the tailgate. So when I select the tailgate, a new configurator pops up and I'm now configuring that tailgate. And based on what I select on the tailgate, you can see different items are required based on whether it's a, um, a barn door, lay flat, straight gate, whatever uh, items I pick. I can also pick uh, standard or custom sizing. We'll go with custom, which then requires me to enter the height of the gate. So we'll say this is 50 and a half inches. Uh, and the latch type will be a uh, manual gate. Okay, so with that, uh, that will save off my uh, tailgate configuration. Uh, again, I have another sub configuration for a cab shield. Uh, we'll try to keep this one simple. We'll just say that's the full cab body. And we'll say, okay, uh, I can come in and tell me what kind of wall thickness. So in this case, I have, again, parameters. Uh, when I select a 10 gauge, uh, it only allows for a specific item, where if I select a quarter inch, then I can come in and select uh, different items based on what I select. Uh, in this case, we'll leave it with the, the 10 gauge thickness, and we'll, we'll save our configuration. So what that does is it goes and looks into the system, sees if an item exists with that exact configuration. Uh, and in my case, uh, it does not, and so it went ahead and created a brand new item. Uh, I don't have my description quite right, but it's supposed to be the truck body type and then the length in inches. Um, so I, I'm missing a little step there, uh, but we'll go ahead and say that they want that one item. Okay, uh, I don't have all of my items with pricing, but it will default a price if I have it, uh, as well as the, the weight can calculate if I have the, the net weight fields filled in. Now, if we just quickly go and look at that item, we selected several different uh, configuration options. And based on the options selected, it built out for me the item's uh, bill of material. So we'll go and look at the structure really quick. So this is the item structure. So again, uh, it created some uh, components for me. Uh, within those components, it built out the different layers to it. So you can see top level, first level, second level. So it's building out all of the requirements based on what those selections were within my sales quote configurator. Okay, so now that we have a sales quote, we're gonna pretend we send this off to the client by sending it through email. They get a PDF of it, they review it, they sign off, everything looks good. 
come back and we convert it to an order. So I'm gonna click yes, which is gonna take my quote, convert it to an order. There's nothing I need to do on the order. Uh, I just wanted to show you that all the information is moving forward. Whatever I have displayed is just brought into that new sales order. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna filter on this item just to uh, keep the planning simple. Uh, but I want you to just remember like dates and who the customer is and the order number 4013, that kind of stuff. Okay. So we're going to come back to our role center and our planning is taking over at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate a regenerative plan. So this is our MPS master production scheduling, which is going to look for all of our direct demand, our customer specific demand. Now I'm going to filter it. So I'm going to filter it to our CI1090, the item that we just created. I copy and pasted that from our sales order and I'm going to say, okay, it checks through the system says, Hey, I found a sales order in the system for this item. And how do I know that is I can come up and click on order tracking and it will tell me 4013. Uh, hopefully you remember that number. Uh, but that's the sales order that we just created. Uh, if we go and want to take a look at it, we can actually see uh, the sales document itself to our customer 30,000. So just information is there if I need to get to it. Okay. So I have now uh, gotten a suggestion from my MPS that I need to make this truck. All right. So all I have to do at this point is carry out the action. Uh, tell it that I want to make a firm plan. So I, I have customer demand. So I'm going to make it firm planned and I'm going to say, okay. And so what that does, oh, I had a, a warning message. So we'll see what this is. Um, so in this case, it's telling me that I'm trying to plan this in the past. Uh, so based on my, my work date, we're going to accept that anyway. Uh, and then we're going to carry out the action. So in this case, now that I've chosen to accept it, it will create a production order. So now in my firm planned status, I have a new production order to make that blank 150 inch item. Okay. And so on that production order is all of the supporting detail that it needs. So what is the, the routing that's going to go into that? What are the components that are going to be into that item, uh, including uh, sub assemblies? Now I can have those explode. I can have them be make to order items as well. I believe in my case, I have them all set up as stocked items. And so only if they fall below the stock level, would I then get a suggestion to make those. Um, so it just depends on your setup, but you can have it build that out as well. So if I were to step through the production process, track my materials, track my output and post that information, then I can ship that product out to the customer. Okay. So the, the final step on this, after I've checked my shortage report, made sure I had material, converted it to a released, uh, process. I release it to the floor. They post their time. They post their material consumption. I can have it back flush all of that information. So it just depends again on your setup. And then, uh, when I change the status to finished, that means I'm, I'm finished with the production order. I've output all of the finished goods into inventory. So in my case, the one truck body, and I'm ready to then deliver that to the customer, which takes me all the way back to the, the sales order itself, where I could then, uh, deliver, uh, and ship an invoice for that particular truck body. And that's how we go full circle with the configurator. Again, the configurator's process is right at the beginning. Um, for coming up with what is going to be inside of that configured item. Once the configurator is done and it's added the information to the line, the rest of Business Central takes over. And that's where we get the MRP engine, the MPS engine, all of the material buying power, the ability to track those, uh, everything related to the system. And so that's how we utilize the configurator inside of Business Central. To, to deliver from start to finish with customers all the way through the process. So hopefully that gives you some better information about the system, what it does, how it tracks the information, and how we can use the configurator for your specific business. Thanks for the time.